Amoeba. AI dungeon is dead. Yeah, long live novel AI. This is the this is the new thing. This is yes. So tell us a little bit about the, about this. So AI dungeon had some uh, had some issues, and uh, as a result, some people decided to create uh, I would call it forks of AI dungeon, just like uh, different Offshoots. like designs. And novel AI was the one that like got the most traction. They use a different um, AI model. NeuralNet, uh, which is like done by like open source, so they're not uh, subject to the same restrictions as the company that did uh, the one that AI Dungeon is using. Um, this has this novel AI also decided to like add some more features, like multiple modules, uh, the ability to to train your own modules. Uh, like if you input, like if you have a body of text, you can put it in and you could train it to be like a AI module. Oh, that that's right. We can. To. You mentioned we can do that now. Yeah. Um, it's got all the other stuff like lore book entries that the that the uh, AI can reference. The standard uh, author's note and memory uh, has uh, uh, options for both text adventure and just regular story writing. And I it releases really own. It's uh, most powerful. Uh, this version of Dragon called lyra or something so it's based off of the same the previous models that ai dungeon used no it's a different it's a different uh it's open i want i, I try, i'm trying to remember what it was what the exact model was called but it's it's a different kind of model that than what ai dungeon was using but uh similar in scope i think if i if i got that correct um i use it it's uh it's all right it's got a lot of customization options once we uh, start a story so we should probably start a story. Uh, you want to view the scenarios? Uh, sure. All right, let's see what we got. I, w uh, I wish we had the text for, like, I don't know, our fanfic maker stream now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got uh, Cretaceous New World, uh, which is, about, I guess, about dinosaurs. Uh, strange shift in things, a scream beneath... Uh, a tale of rats and geese. Rat is found mutilated by a goose in a short but brutal conflict ensures after some back and forth and open content, conflict, a shoddy truth is established. Goose and geese military war. That's uh, That sounds... Anything oh. sticking out to you? Uh, not particularly. Oh my gosh. Uh, so Twitch has an entry for novel AI, but YouTube doesn't, so that's why it is marked as AI Dungeon on YouTube. Yeah, but it's not... Uh, I have I have the Navy Seal copy pasta. Can we train it on that? It would be very short. Like uh, like it would just be. I don't think that would work. Okay. But you could input the. Uh, you could, we could do that. We could input the. Uh, the Navy Seal copy pasta. No, that that wouldn't really go anywhere though. Unless we like have it be like uh, the, a man entered the. So this is the this is similar to the how AI dungeon worked if you just typed in your own thing from the get go. Yeah, you you want to you want to do that? Start you can yeah that's how that, that works. You can start you can enter your own prompt or you can select a scenario. Hmm. Don't take too long. Daylight's burning. I know. I know. It's okay. We can, we can abridge it in the highlights. Uh. Well, we we do Dragon Ball a lot. I don't, I don't necessarily want to go back to that again. Uh, we did JoJo. Um, what haven't we done? We could do Owl House. <laughs> I that's a, that's sure. A show even this show we've been watching a whole lot. You are Luce Nosita. We can talk about the uh, Ida Clawthorn Grunkle Stand ship. You are Luce Nosita. You are accompanying your mentor. Uh. Eda Crawthorn uh, to uh, a place known as Gravity Falls, Oregon, to visit your your teacher's new flame. Uh, what was this? Stanley or Stanford? I think it was Stanley and Stanford yeah, was Stanford the twin. Was, yeah, Stanley Pines and his. Great grand nephews, grand grand 
grand nep nephew slash niece grand <laughs> grand <laughs> oh god damn it nephews and nieces should have a unified fucking like term grand <laughs> well shit <laughs> the english language has ruined us god why is there no grand and his <laughs> i don't fucking know <laughs> sure, sure that works you heard that Tipper has also has the ability to use magic. Well, he d does he, or is he just kind of interested well, he, in studying it? Uh, that Dipper is interested in magic, and you are excited to show him what you have learned. This is full on fan fiction. Yes, but this is fan fiction that is ba this is based off that one uh, fan piece of fan art I saw where. Like Ida and Stanley were like were like very loudly like having sex off screen and just the fucking the mystery twins and Luce are just staring up and like just embarrassment like oh god. There is a lot of this ship, but we are not the only ones who thought of this immediately. I think they referenced it in uh in the show, like offhandedly as well, but Oh yeah. an owl house? Yeah. Is this enough or do we need more? Uh, I think I think that's enough. Uh, let me now that that's there. I'm gonna see if uh... now there's extra settings right, here to this go. as well. You mentioned yes. So AI model currently uh, we have five of them. Calliope is the is older one. That's basically Griffin. Uh, was it be called Gr or the pre Griffin? Uh, Sigurd is Griffin. Uh, Euterpe is uh, is currently the experimental dragon version of this one, and then we have. Uh, Genji, which I guess writes in Japanese, and uh, Snick, okay, which well, writes in. Oh, I forget what this meme? one writes in. Given our experience uh, with oh, AI no, it dungeon, writes in code. it writes in code. Given our it experience writes... with AI dungeon, the dragon was just playing better than the previous models, so we might yeah, as well use the experimental. One. So now we have AI model. Now, this one's interesting because it, it's trained on different stuff. You can do. H.P. Lovecraft, Edgar Allan Poe, Arthur Conan Doyle styles, and then just regular themes. 19th century romance, uh, artificial intelligence, dark fantasy, dragons. Yeah, it's just a lot of, like, really cool. They, they really went all out on this. And then we have Inspirations. Okay, are those, like, actual book series? Uh, yeah, based off of... Nerve Gear is based off Sword Art Online. Throne Wars, Game of Thrones... I think. Oh, I guess they couldn't name uh, them the actual things. Yeah, copyright. Uh, but they're trained on, I think, either actual or regular or fan Twilight. fiction. What? Twilight. Mercantile Wolf Girl Romance. No, that's Spice and Wolf. Oh. Crab Snake. Wow, I haven't thought of that in ages. <laughs> Nobody has. Which is a shame. I think I heard it was pretty good. So what would fit in this situation? Magic uh, Academy? I Magic saw, Library? Basically. That seems like the most general fantasy or magic academy. What's They're not really academy? at an academy, though. Yeah, that's true. Magic library doesn't count either. Uh, and we did Lovecraft, Lovecraft last time, so that was yeah, the whole Cthulhu model. Let's do, yeah, general fantasy. Uh, you want to add some stuff to the memory? Uh, Dipper and Mabel are Our twins. twins. Stanley is called Grunkle Stan. Gr Grunkle. It, there's a K there, I think. No, it's Great Uncle Grunkle. Okay, fine. Uh, Ida is a powerful witch. With a... Uh, Ida has a, a Is has this, a is this post... Wait, let, let's not do, like, spoilery stuff. Let's, let's just say okay. she's a powerful witch. Okay, spoilery stuff for either one. Ida... Is in a relationship with Grunkle Stan. <laughs> sure, that. <laughs> and then, uh. You are Luce Nocita. Well, we started with that. Sure. Just. Well, never drive it home. I, yeah. 
you are author's you are note. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> author's note. Hey, you guys. I know I said I quit fanfic writing, but I've learned a lot about my mistake. Turns out, turn. Turns out that I was being what they call racist, and that's not right. So I want to write a story that 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 uh, exposes just how bad racism is. Hope you like it. Export story to file file to clipboard as scenario. Yeah, you could export the story just in case. But for now, uh, we just type all the stuff in and then hit yeah, send. Yeah, uh, I would say that you could say author's note. This takes place in the. Gr I don't know if that work that'll work here. I, I just don't know. put it in as a joke. I don't think it's gonna I do anything. I I also don't know if. Uh... Okay, how about this? This story takes place in the modern day. Okay, we can just just in the memory. Yeah, in the author's note. Just to so I don't want it. It's like a stronger. It's more influential version of memory. Is author's note? I think note. so. Yeah, info placed here will strongly influence AI output. And this story involves magic. There we go. I think we're ready now. Wait, uh, hold on. I want to go to advanced first. Uh, so you mentioned I, I posited yeah, the idea of stuff. like entering a character web and seeing it try to to manage that. Is that something we could do in memory? Not for this, but for a future one. Oh yeah, no, that's that's what to, that is what the lore book is for. There's a lore book. Yeah, lore book. So, can uh, insert like uh, like entries into the lore book. You can even export them and just add the uh, characters into whatever story you want. And then uh, you can have like Luce Nosita, and then you could just write some info about her, and then keys like Luce, uh, the Luce, Lucita, Luce the human, and then stuff like that. And then the AI will. Whenever the name is said, it will remember, oh yeah, this is a character that exists. So it's like a pool of memory settings attached to a character. Yes, yeah. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, no, that that's, uh, it, it's very, it's very uh, easy, it, it's got good uh, UI for that kind of thing, and people can just uh, export and import character, uh, theoretically export and import character sheets. Well, this is something we kind of just pulled out to... to test everything to show off the same. yeah so let's no i really like this one just even even if ai dungeon didn't uh, didn't get affected by that bullshit i would prefer this one because this one has a lot of like cool quality of life features attached to it it is very in depth it's impressive Banned tokens you don't want sex you can just ban sex <laughs> yeah and then uh let's see randomness let us know if you have any suggestions darian Repetition penalty. And then there's some advanced options. We don't. We're not going to mess with these because I don't really understand what they're for. Uh, Config right. co-writer. What does that mean? Oh what? Oh. Config preset. Yeah. So, where was that? Where it was here, right? So co-writer, writing companion that plays off your work, mo creatively moving the store, storing, the story forward. Full house. That's highly like, high randomness among relevant tokens and high repetition penalty to avoid looping. So that's like full writer. It writes the story. I think so. Uh, I, it seems to high be. randomness. No, it's just, just going to go wherever. Weaver constrained creativity to provide a strong but sensible story progression with good room for variety. Creative writing with outputs from a wide selection of tokens. That's Mothra. So I can just go anywhere. Uh, more folk. Consistent but unconstrained creativity with all its advantages and drawbacks. This one's going to go really crazy. That Go sounds ahead. like Tomoko. A flexible ride with low scope for handling controlled creativity. Morpho sounds like Tomoko. You want to do Morpho? Let's try it for this one. All right, Morpho. <laughs> the number of the beast! Okay, repetition penalty, one. Okay. So is, okay, that works out for Tomoko. I thought yeah. it said it had a high repetition penalty. I guess not. Higher, it makes the output less repetitive. So this could be repetitive. This could be, right. yes. Okay. You want to you wanna send it and see what, what Tomoko? Yeah, let's go. All right, Tomoko. All right, time to write my masterpiece. Did I put a Hit space it. at the start by accident? 
No, you, it'll be fine. Send it. New story. But you okay, will I'll, I'll, let's start be from the beginning. Careful around Hold on, him. Jack. What? Let's read the whole thing from the beginning okay. for the sake of the Voodoo Hot Like highlights. All right, fine. You are Luz Noseda. You are accompanying your mentor, Ida Clawthorne, to a place known as Gravity Falls, Oregon, to visit your teacher's new flame, Stanley Pines, and his weird kids, Dipper and Mabel. You heard that Dipper is also interested in the study of magic and are excited to show him what you've learned, but you'll need to be extra careful around him or else he will be able to read your mind. <laughs> this story takes place in the water. <laughs> the story involves magic. You are Luz Noseda. Author's note, be sure to read my previous fanfic in order to get the context of this one. You can write, yeah, write that. We're just role-playing as a fanfiction writer. At least her grammar's, like, fine now. Yeah, it's improved. Yeah. Author's note, be sure to read my previous fanfics in order to get the full story before you read this one. Luz Nosita was a girl who loved magic. It was her life. She had been studying it since she was a small child, and had made great strides in her craft by the time she turned ten. Okay, we're, we're already deviating. This is a this is an AU. AU. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is the alternate universe where, uh... Where the, the Emperor Bellos is her father, I guess. Okay, so c should we just keep hitting send, or how much should we be typing, do you think? Uh, we could increase. We can increase the word count, if, you, if, if that's a problem. Let's see. Uh, randomness. Output length is 160 characters. Uh, you want to crank it up? Yeah, let's try, like, All right, 300. So, so the highest 600. is 600. Sure, fuck I don't it. Think we'll... Okay, fine. All right. Let's get weird with it. Yeah, getting weird with it. Okay, so she, she's she been studying, and she... Now, this could be interpreted multiple ways. Either magic exists in this continuity for her, or she's just... She's been, like, a cult interest. Or maybe or maybe she is magic. Is not, like, magic as in real magic, but magic as in, like, uh, sleight of hand magician shit. Yeah. And then she learned that real magic was a thing. Uh... That, that's when she stumbled into the uh, realm, the uh, realm, the spoiled isles. I, I don't know the boiling isles. But we're but our story is supposed to be in Gravity Falls. I'm confused and met, now. And met. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll yada yada it. She stumbled into the realm of boiling isles and met Etta Clawthorn and her her friend slash pet King. Oh, we're adding King now. Yeah. <laughs> If her Mabel would interact well with King, you know. Yeah. Uh, King, now... King, period. Now they're taking a detour in the human realm to Gravity Falls, Oregon. Yeah. That, that's how we yada yada it. We're gonna... Yeah. Tomoko, we need... We really need the story to take place in Gravity Falls. Okay, okay, I'm working on it. Stop pressuring me! I have you even seen the show Tomoko? I I I read a, a book or so, or two. I read fan fiction. What, what kind of fan fiction? Was it that pine cess shit? Wasn't it? Was it? Uh, it was. Dang it. We never watched fucking. Uh, this is not your fault. I, it's your fault. I'm not popular at all. We're just we're just fucking head cannoning Tomoko as like a fanfic writer. Yeah, it just happened that way. This is now our character. It's not the real Tomoko. No, it's uh from it's the not, stupid uh, fanfic it's not maker Kuroki stream. Tomoko. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, Zaraki Tomoko. Okay. Do we want another? Do we want Zaraki daughter. tied to this? What? She's just. She looks like Kuroki Tomoko, but. Okay. She That's when that she, she stumbled into the realm of the Boiling Isles and met Ida Clawthorn and her friend slash pet king. That was a year ago, and now she was on her way to Gravity Falls to meet the Pines family. She hoped that she would able to be able to show Dipper the wonders of magic and maybe help him get over his fears. Okay, he's afraid. Luz was a witch and had been since birth. She had okay. brown skin. 
A thin okay. face with large dark eyes. She had straight black hair that fell down to her shoulders. Okay, A U okay, loose. And, and was tied into a ponytail with a long red ribbon. Oh my god. That's she, the, she's dressed like Kiki. She wore a long black dress that exposed her arms and legs, but covered m most of her chest. What? She wore black sandals with a silver buckle on the straps that crossed over her ankles, and she had a black leather necklace with an amber stone that was set in the shape of a snake on it that she always wore around her neck. This is a weird costume Tomoko's come up with. <laughs> Luz had been born in the Boiling Isles, but her family had traveled there from a place called California when she was younger. Wait, born in the Boiling Isles, but traveled there from a place called California when she was young. Like, like when she was an infant? Well, no, she was born there, so... Uh, okay, yeah, I'm confused. Okay, I can't say she'd never got, been there, her, because she... Her mother, her mother got knocked up in California and moved to the Boiling Isles before she was born. In this continuity. We're... But she was born in the Boiling Isles. It's just contradicted yeah. itself. Younger. What's younger than birth? When you're a fetus. Well, younger than when she was... Uh, whatever. Yeah, when you're younger than a, than a baby, you're a fetus. And that that is why... <laughs> she was a fetus when she was in California. Then she, she her and her mother, like, when, when her mother was pregnant, moved to the Boiling Isles, and she was born in the Boiling Isles. Okay, we we need to we need to get on with the story, Tomoko. She'd never been there herself. She wondered what this magical place called California could be like. Maybe Dipper could tell her about it. Luz was traveling with her mentor, Ida Clawthorn, who most people called Grunkle Stan, and her pet that. king, King, who was a blue dragon. Oh, I guess we didn't specify what king was. They had uh, come can... all the way from the magical realm of the Boiling Isles to visit Grunkle Stan's new flame, Stanley Pines, and his kids, Dipper and Mabel? <laughs> this is way off! We've driven off a fucking cliff! They were excited to meet new people and make new friends. Luz had been traveling for three days when they finally reached their destination, Gravity Falls, Oregon. They were all exhausted from the journey and decided to rest at the Pines residence before setting out again in the morning. They had spent all day traveling on a bus and were all too tired to even think about going anywhere else for now. Tomoko, lay off the mushrooms. It's affecting your writing. So they're only staying for a day... Ida is Grunkle Stan. Or at least she stole Grunkle Stan's identity. <laughs> Who most people called... We can, by the way, we can edit text uh, still. Yeah, okay, we, it, we can it, go back and do that. Should we, we do that? On. Yeah, we can. Uh, Who most people called Grunkle Stan's girlfriend. <laughs> make that make sense. We can just delete that part. No, we can... We you can really want to force, force something into it? Okay, fine, never mind. And her pet king. King, who was a... What would you call king? Uh... Black... Doggish creature? With a skull on its head. All Uncle right. Stan's new flame. Okay, Ida's new flame. It kind of defeats the purpose if we have to correct everything, though. It's funny, though. <laughs> we're, we're the editors for talk. <laughs> Let's keep going on this one a little bit longer. All right. Uh, we we gotta add some dialogue. Okay. Ida, so Ida, like, say something about Ida, like talking to Stanley Pines. Ida, like, say something Ida would. Say. <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> Let's see what'll happen. Can you really only stay for one day? Grunkle Stan asked Ida. Yeah, but don't worry, stud. It'll be a hell of a night. 
Luz and the Pines twins were scared. They thought Ida was going to kill them out of anger or revenge for something they had done. They were sitting in front of Ida's fireplace in Gravity Falls, Oregon, when they first met Ida Clawthorn and her pet King King. It's it's repeating, like, the whole paragraph? Oh my god. This is why repetition needs to be higher than one. Well, this this was a bit of a failed experiment. <laughs> it's doing the same thing that AI Dungeon did back when the, the, the detective story. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Luce, Luce slapped both the Pine Twins in the back of the heads to break them out of their rut. Watch that repeat. I'm about ready to give up on this one. Stop saying that. I'm not going to kill you. Next time you use that phrase again, I'll be sure to break more than just your skull. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to kill you. Dipper was about to say something else about how he would never use that phrase again, but Mabel stopped him by saying, Okay, okay, we're sorry. Yeah, It's just going again. So, uh, Morpho's out. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you, kill you, kill you, kill you. The, uh, repetition <laughs> one does not pose good results. Uh, Tomoko's like, sorry, I'm out of ideas. I should've, I should've actually did some, did some, like, research. I guess I should've watched the series first, huh? Yeah, both of them. <laughs> Alright, next story. So I think bef between now and the previous time, I don't remember if we'd started or not, but we started watching Miraculous, which has a very strange kind of Takahashi-ish character web. Do you think, yeah. how much of that do you think we could put in and have it attempt to work out? I don't know. I don't know if it knows what, uh... well, it has a superhero setting as a, as a module. We could theoretically make it work. I think the big problem with this one was the repetition setting. Yeah, it was at one. I set it to co-writer. Co-writer is at four. Okay. So. Yeah. So, uh, let's, uh. Yeah. Let's do new story. New story. Let's begin. Okay. Uh, can we enter, like, the detail stuff first, or do we have to start writing the prompt before anything? Just yeah. Well, if you type in a few a few words, then then it'll allow us to uh, to edit the thing. So, you are who are we, Marinette? Do also known as the superhero ladybug. All right, cool. Let let us. Uh, Oops. What? I think you okay. clicked on something when I hit backspace. That makes sense. Uh, story. Okay, and we're looking for superheroes. There we go. The theme is superheroes. Okay. So is it? Do you think we can put it in here and get away with it? Because it wouldn't. It take take a while to do like the whole character log thing. Right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, memory still works like just fine. What? No, that's that's backwards. <laughs> Ladybug is a secret identity of Marinette. Oh, well, they're, I, they're both secret identities, technically. Like, Clark Kent is Superman's I'm, secret identity, because his identity is a secret. Her identity, but yes. Okay. What's I, I'm, I'm suddenly drawing a blank. What's, what's the guy's name? Adrian. Uh, Adrian is the secret identity of... Cat Noir. Ladybug and Cat Noir team up to fight Akuma. Does that does that work? Because they're like on a team together is the point. Yeah, sure. That could work. Am 
Marinette likes Adrian. We, should we put loves? Is that more explicit? Yeah. Adrian loves Ladybug. Okay, that, that works. Uh, and then Ladybug and Cat Noir fight Akuma. Well, I'm trying to get the character web thing is the, is the main thing. Okay. Uh, it, it's just trying to trying to put it all into words is confusing. Marinette does not know that Cat Noir is Adrian and vice versa. Are you remembering these details? I, d I, I, I watched like half a season. Is that good enough? It's fine. You get the basic idea. Everyone. <laughs> there we go. That's about right, right? See, even I knew that. I, th I think we're done with Tomoko. That, the, Tomoko was the Morpho experiment. Yeah, no, this is no, this is still Tomoko. This is just... Uh, <laughs> we're trying to refine... I just like to call... I don't know. It's, it's, it's too just, ingrained in my mind. I'm gonna do that even by accident. Our character the for the AI dungeons. Paris. <laughs> that that'll <laughs> fuck it up, right? Yeah. That no, you know. No, that's fine. That's fine. I want to see what the AI does. Because they're, they're, they're in, in Miraculous, the population of Paris is like fucking 20. And you can see the entire town from, like, someone's window. Yeah, it's just... It's, just it's like a tiny here. little recreation of Paris. <laughs> it's Paris, the theme park version. Okay, uh... What are you, what are you looking for? I, I don't know. Do we Did we set all the advanced stuff and everything already? It should be still there, yep. We got co-writer. Oh. Output length, we're going to set that to 600 still. Repetition right. penalty is at 4, which is higher than 1. <laughs> Randomness is at 55. Uh, you want to try? Let's do this. Let's do the co-writer stuff. Okay. Uh, should Just we type the... a little more for the prompt, I assume? Of course. You and your partner, Cat Noir. Oh. have maybe civilian identities is a better way to say it yeah identities 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 <laughs> I've identified your identities no no that's well, now what? Uh, that kind of makes it sound like they did it that like it within sight of each other, which that never happens. And have reverted to your civilian identities separately. After, okay, no, I don't. Is that, that seems like a good start, right? Yeah, let's... Alright, send let's it. Let's see where it goes. Okay, over to you, AI. You are Marinette, also known as the superhero Ladybug. You and your partner, Cat Noir, have just finished fighting an evil Akuma and have reverted to your civilian identities separately. You hope he hasn't figured out your secret. Cat has been... First name Cat, last name Noir. <laughs> has been working on a case that's gotten him into trouble with his boss, Captain Louvau. <laughs> Louvo. Well found help, I know. <laughs> he needs you for backup so he can sneak back into work without getting fired. The problem, your parents don't want you going anywhere near danger because they think it'll be bad luck or something. They've grounded you until further notice, but since when do superheroes get grounded? Okay, this is... This is uh, it's on genre, at least. On genre. I'm sorry, said Adrian, but I need help. His voice sounded different than usual, less like himself. It was more serious, deeper somehow, but still had its charm. It took me a moment to realize what this meant. Adrian what? wasn't acting. This was real. Something really terrible must have happened if he changed his tone from charming to desperate enough to make my heart skip a beat. By the way, I just want to let you know 
that it would it just transfer from second person to first person. It did. I noticed that. <laughs> Shit. Okay. She's um, making him sound desperate. Is, is he like crying on the phone? Maybe that's the unreli unreliable narrator is in full effect. Yeah. Just. I need your help. She she wants him to sound desperate. Yeah. Oh, he sounds desperate. Meanwhile, uh, and meanwhile, Satsuki Kiryuin's like, get over it, girl. Oh, that's right. That sure they share a voice actor. <laughs> voice act. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's some weird ass shit. The the fucking the fucking oh, Marinette, you're my best friend. Uh, sharing a voice actress with with your you fucking pigs in human clothing. I will. <laughs> Just completely separate characters. They're just, very polar opposite. It's so crazy. If they were to hang out near each other, they would. One of them would probably kill the other one. Sasuke Kiryuin and was it Isla? Ayla? Isla. Isla. You know, like uh, it spelled the same as the, that Awesome Knots character. Alia. Alia. I, I knew Ayla didn't sound right. I, I thought it did, so so you have you have one over me. Uh my I'm corrected you. So he's calling to ask Marinette for help, not Ladybug. Yeah, no this well he doesn't know what who Ladybug is. What can I do? I'm grounded, you tell him. He sighs heavily. That's why we're doing this now. We can't risk being seen together by anyone else. And besides, he glances around nervously, this isn't exactly safe either. You follow him down the street to a small alleyway between two buildings. I thought we were on the phone. I, I, no, I guess not. A few people pass through here every day, but no one seems to pay attention to them. Where are we, you ask? We're going to meet someone who might be able to help us, he says. Quietly. Someone very important, and dangerous too. Your stomach drops at these words. Danger? Is Adrian trying to say this person could hurt him? That doesn't sound good, but you decide there's nothing left to lose anyway. As you meet, you go down, to, and then he enter, and he goes, this is the person we're going to meet, and it's Frank Castle, a.k.a. The Punisher. <laughs> I want to know if fucking the AI knows what, 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 who Frank Castle is. The previous AI dungeon model was able to, like, bring in characters from the series without us prompting it. Yeah, this this thing is though is that is that uh, I guess they that data was exclusively trained on like Reddit, uh, whereas this one the modules are are more uh, as I would say modular. We could do we could do a uh, fucking module trained on DBZ novelizations. So she just knows who he is. Well, I mean, you're in the superhero network. You know who other superheroes are. That's kind of the superhero trope. Is that is that superheroes just know who each other are? Once Frank Castle is not. He like he makes it obvious who he is, right? Oh yeah, no, he he he's got no secret identity. Everybody knows he's the Punisher. This is the person we're going to meet. Adrian says. You peer into the alleyway and see the Punisher, aka Frank Castle. Frank looks up from where he stands next to a dumpster. He wears black body armor, dark sunglasses, and a mask over his face. Okay. <laughs> he carries a large gun in each hand, which makes you wonder how he manages to walk upright. How how fucking large are these guns? He's, he's wielding... He's like that dude in the Matrix who was, like, shooting at, like, the cops with two, with two automatic shotguns. What does Frank missing? Castle sound like? Uh... He's out. Sounds really gruff. Like a little bit Christian Bale Batman? Uh, yeah. Who's asking? <laughs> he asks gruffly. My name is Adrian, Adrian replies. And this is Marinette. He points at you. <clears throat> Grumbles Frank. Don't suppose you brought any food? Adrian shakes his head. No, sorry. Well, then you can go right ahead and leave. I got plenty of food for myself. Please, Please. pleads Adrian. What? Well, he has food. Why did he want food? <laughs> it's the toll. <laughs> oh man, I'm reminded of that scene where in uh, in that movie shooting him up, where uh, the main character tries to buy bullets with food stamps.
<laughs> sure, that'll work. My parents run a bakery, you offer shyly. Frank's attention perks up. They made some special bread for me last week. My mom baked it especially for a friend she met recently. Oh yeah, he says, turning towards you. Doesn't look like much to me. She said it would bring good. She said it would bring good fortune. Explains Adrian. So I thought maybe it would help us find our way out of this mess. Are this nondescript, unknown mess? Hmm. <laughs> says Frank. He turns away again and starts rummaging through his bag. Hey, wait! Shouts Adrian. How about we trade? She can have some of my bread, and I'll give her a piece of mine. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Fine, says Frank. Just make sure you eat it before tomorrow morning. With that, he hands you a loaf of French bread. Why is he giving us bread? <laughs> We're just trading bread. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's it's so nondescript. I don't think it knows where it's going. <laughs> I was like, I'm just ro I'm just rolling with it. I don't know. <laughs> you brought me here to trade bread. You ask Adrian, confused. Yeah, he answers. There aren't many places where we can talk freely, so I thought this would be best. You take the bread from him hesitantly. What kind of friend is Adrian? You didn't expect him to be so generous, giving the daughter of a bakery owner's bread. Thank you, you murmur, for everything. Any time, he says. Now let's go. He pushes <laughs> past you and heads deeper into the alleyway. Wait, you call after him. Aren't we forgetting something? Uh... Oh yeah, thanks for bringing the bread. He calls back over his shoulder, then he disappears into another part of the alley. Wait, was that Frank? Yeah, I guess yeah, yeah, Frank wasn't even like a major character. He was just this random hobo. Thanks for hobo. the bread! <laughs> He's just this <laughs> random hobo. <laughs> I'm here to meet you someone. We trade bread? Alright, let's go. <laughs> okay. Did you just hit send again? Uh, I, I didn't. Did you? I don't think I did. It, it kept it's going, though. Could... Let's right. hurry. As you follow him, you glance back at the bread. You haven't eaten anything since breakfast, and it smells delicious. There's no time to waste, though. You shove it into your backpack, hoping you won't regret eating it later. Once inside the alleyway, Adrian stops. Here we are, he says. Be careful. Then he steps aside, revealing a man crouched behind a trash can. Hello, says the man. His voice is deep and masculine. He stands slowly and removes his helmet. Underneath, he's balding with thick eyebrows and a mustache. My name is Count Vertigo. How may I assist you today? Oh. <laughs> Count Vertigo is the villainous responsible for kidnapping Adrian's father. We what? <laughs> Wait. So it's a what? villainous who looks like Eggman, and she's kidnapped... Wait, wait, what's his name? Mr. Regressed. Gabriel. Gabriel, yeah. Okay. Uh What 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 are Count Vertigo's demands? Count Vertigo What no we so we got Oh, they don't know that uh, that uh Gabriel is Hawkmoth. Uh no, that's another identity that is unknown to everybody. Yeah, you want you you want to add that? Okay. Count Vertigo. <laughs> that does cool. sound like an Akuma name. That sounds like that sounds really cool. Oh, uh, you want to go to story? There we go. I don't know how to spell their their French last name, so I'm just not. That's fine. My name is Cal Vertigo. <laughs> Count Vertigo has kidnapped Gabriel. There's so right. much for it to remember. Yeah. This is actual writing. We gotta remember all these little plot hooks, or else the story, or else the story falls apart. Nah, you don't have to worry about that. Toriyama proved it. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so, uh... <laughs> where, where, how the fuck is this story gonna be resolved? I, I don't know. <laughs> a you notice Adrian look up slightly and see the Punisher with a sniper rifle on a roof waiting for his signal. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Okay. It, that, I brought her like you asked. I, why no, the that's... fuck is Marinette here for this? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. We'll go with that then. He says... He then turns to you and gives you a wink. Just to let you know everything will be okay. Okay. I don't know where this is gonna go with this fucking... Yeah? Yeah. Sure. All right, let's see what let's see what, what the story gives us. I brought her like you asked, Adrian says. He turns and winks at you, suggesting that he has a plan. Count Vertigo grins an evil grin. Excellent, she says. Now come closer so we can discuss things properly. Adrian follows her lead, moving closer to her. As soon as he gets close enough, she reaches out and grabs him by the throat. Ooh, she purrs. Nice muscles. Adrian struggles against her grip. Easy there, she says. If you fight me, I will kill you. Why would you want to do that? He asks, gasping for air. You told me yourself that you wanted to talk. Yes, but I never said I wouldn't use violence first. Of course you did, he says. You're a supervillain. What? What, what kind of fucking Venture Brothers shit is this? Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck, fuck it. Bring our stupid headcanon about uh, ladybug villains being tied to the Venture Brothers logic. <laughs> You're bound by the Guild of Calamitous Intent, Adrian argues. Count Vertigo reluctantly loosens her grip. Do you honestly believe that I'm afraid of you? He, she says. Even if I were, I wouldn't show it. But you are afraid, he insists. Not anymore, she says with a laugh. After all, I've already killed one of your friends. Adrian's eyes widen in shock at this news. What? he exclaims. His name was Gabriel, she continues. He was the leader of the Brotherhood of Evil. He tried to steal my plans for a new weapon called the Anti-Life Equation. What? That's an actual thing from DC. <laughs> when I caught him, he begged me to spare his life. Instead, I threw him off a rooftop. He fell to his death. You murdered him? <laughs> We gotta confirm the kill. <laughs> nice. Did you see the body? Marinette asks. Well, uh... Count Vertigo hesitates. Adrian grins. Rookie mistake. Count Vertigo snorts. Right, of course you saw it. You're a superhero. You always check out dead bodies, even if they're not yours. Excuse me? Wait, so the, the Count knows that they're superheroes, I guess. Sorry, he, get, he mutters. I guess I forgot to mention that detail. Anyway, what is Gabriel's crime? It's, it's like father. Count it's is, is assisting with an investigation now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you killed him, huh? He yes. stole my technology, she replies. And you killed him for it? Technically, yes, she admits. However, I didn't actually murder him. Not yet, anyway. How long ago did you throw him off the roof? Last night, he died instantly. Adrian frowns. That's odd. I mean, it sounds like he should still be alive. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is Adrian in denial? <laughs> Jeez. 
<laughs> like fucking Zorro. <laughs> Well, At that moment, Frank Castle walks in carrying the unconscious Gabriel on his back. You lose something? He asks. Count Vertigo laughs. No, no, we didn't. In fact, I think we found ourselves a hostage. See that young man over there? That's Gabriel, one of the leaders of the Brotherhood of e Evil. If we don't get what we want, we're going to kill him. I don't think so, says Frank. He sets Gabriel gently on the ground. You heard her. Heard who? Wait, what? <laughs> Count Vertigo always refers to everybody as females, except for the people she hates. Kill him if you want, but we're keeping Gabriel alive. Frank nods. Okay, let's try something else. <laughs> what? He kneels down and pulls out his gun. He aims it at Gabriel's forehead. Take aim, he commands, or else you die. <laughs> we can't kill him, now kill him. <laughs> we tried killing him, Kurt. This is making less sense than the previous AI dungeon ones we got. <laughs> but there's so many settings, I don't know if we're fucking it up. There is so many settings. I don't know. Uh, and the confusion, both Marinette and Adria ducked out and became Ladybug and Cat Noir, ready to fight, throw down with, with Count Vertigo. And I guess Frank Castle. <laughs> Maybe Frank has, like, Gabriel hostage against Count Vertigo. I guess. This seems like a three-party situation of some kind. <laughs> While Frank Castle and Count Vertigo continue their confusing discussion, Marinette and Adrian ducked out in order to transform into Ladybug and Cat Noir. They stood nearby and watched from afar as events unfolded. Are you ready? whispers Ladybug. Cat Noir what? nods. Ladybug just... leaps into action, transforming into Cat Noir in midair. She lands gracefully and runs towards Gabriel. Before he can react, Ladybug tackles him to the floor. <laughs> Gabriel is just getting the shit end of the stick. He just woke up from being unconscious, and now he's tackled to the ground again. Oh, it gets worse than that. She holds him there while Cat Noir draws his gun and shoots him in the chest. The Gabriel fuck? falls limp and dies. Good work, says Count Vertigo. She turns to Adrian. What now? We wait, he replies, until they finish talking to each other. What do you want from me? demands Count Virigo. Her vo voice is cold and car hard like ice. It has not ru it has not messed up Count Vertigo's pronouns <laughs> once. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it has firmly established that she is a bald, mustachioed woman. <laughs> what do you want from me? I want we want the AT life equation. It's too dangerous to be left in your hands. Who's who's saying this? Uh, Cat, Ladybug. Because she's the leader of the two, I guess. Wait, isn't that what the Count wanted, though? I wanted it back. Well, I mean, she must have gotten it back if she threw him off the fucking roof. And, and killed him three times. <laughs> and just, and, <laughs> that's fine. Gabriel's still alive. No one dies in this show. We want the anti-life equation, you say. It's too dangerous to be left in your hands. Her eyes narrow dangerously. Is that why you kidnapped my son? Oh. We only need it temporarily. We, it. You assure her. We'll return it once you deliver it to us. I'm afraid I can't do that, she says. Why not? Because it's too dangerous for anyone to have it. I understand, you say. So you're saying you're willing to let me keep it for a short period of time. Yes! Great, you nod. In exchange, I promise to give you the antidote when we're finished using it. She smiles thinly at this. Very well, we accept your terms. Wonderful! Wow, <laughs> that was confusing negotiation. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there we go. You hand her a small potato, which Count Vertigo has called her son. This is Gabriel, you explain. 
He was the leader of the Brotherhood of Evil. He was captured by the League of Villains during our last battle, and now he is a potato. <laughs> Count Vertigo looks down at the potato in her palm. Where is he now? You shrug. Dead. Ah, she murmurs, poor boy. But how will you cure him with the an without the anti-life equation? You smile. Don't worry. It won't be necessary. Once we get the formula, we'll simply reverse its effect. The, the pro-life equation. Yeah. Really? She leans forward eagerly. You can do that? Amazing! You nod. It shouldn't be difficult, you say. All we have to do is comb combine the anti-life equation with the antidote. Sure, that makes perfect sense. I think I'm done with this story. Yeah, I, this is just <laughs> gone. I think we might need to be a little more conservative with our settings. Yeah, let's let's see. Uh, maybe half the the length to prevent the AI from getting too off track. Yeah, it it goes like way off with like six hundred. It, it goes it goes hard. It's like I ah, will go. We're gonna go. Maybe turn down the randomness to like two point five. Yeah, lower randomness, higher repetition punish. Well, yeah. I guess we we should want to like punish repetition, right? Yeah. Well, uh, three point five. Uh, I'm worried if like if it's too high, then it's that incentivizes it to keep the story going in wildly different directions. Is the thing? Oh well, this is co-writer. It plays off our work. Uh, how about we do Weaver next? Strong but sensible story progression. We're going to hold you to that. Yeah, Weaver. Randomness, one. Output length, uh, repetition penalty, 375. So that's all default settings. Yeah. No, these, these are these default settings. Yeah, for Weaver, Weaver sets them all. co-writer is this. Okay. I see. Weaver. Also, it, it affects uh, the stuff down here, I noticed. Yeah. So, so whatever this stuff is. All right. New story. Therian was unsurprisingly asking for Castlevania. Wait, hold on. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, wait, what? Oh. Hold on, these are different stuff. Emperor Moth. Mmm, <laughs> yes, I like these moth settings. Maximum randomness while still being plot relevant, like Sphinx riddles. Is that part of the reason we made jokes about Hawk Moth and the and the the monarch because they're both butterfly themed? <laughs> yeah, I am the monarch. Oh, I am Hawk Moth. You've oh. been you've been what? You've been possessing babies? That's totally beyond the guild rules. You can't do that. It was an axe. It was an accident. I swear it won't happen again. All right, coherent creativity. Let's try that. Okay. What's our prompt? Uh. Oh. You are Dracula. Mix in other that. characters like Mega Man or Doom Guy. Oh, okay. Oh, in that case. You. Have no name. You have no name. You only... <laughs> Known as... Good enough. Good enough. All right. 
Let's do, let's go. I, I know see. different Doom guys have names. Some of them. I don't know any of them. No, he's just the Doom Slayer. Uh, he's apparently related to BJ Blaskowitz. You have no name. You are known throughout the land as the Doom Slayer. You have heard tales of a vile demon demon being summoned to this world. Information has been scarce, but the townsfolk refer to him as Dracula. You decide to raid his castle to put an end to him immediately. The air was thick with dust and smoke from battle when you burst into Dracula's lair in search of your enemy. That's something Doom Guy does. He bursts into places. Yeah, he just kicks the door open and with a shotgun, like, knock, knock, motherfucker. The castle itself looked like something out of a gothic nightmare, a vast structure constructed entirely of stone that reached high overhead. That's accurate. Oh, we didn't, we didn't do a module for this one. It's oh, did we not set a module, it? I think. Hold on. It started off fine. It's Sigurd. We're on Sigurd, by the way. I think we'll that... stick with... That's the base. Should, we, the should we set a module or should we just leave it? Is Let's that like a gothic it. module? Uh, cross genre. Sure, cross genre. That's so nondescript. What does that change? Well, we'll see. I think it's like a mixture of all the genres. <laughs> You punch a wall, meat falls out. It is human flesh. It looks fresh enough still for blood to be oozing through puncture wounds on its face. Your sword flashes again at another section of crumbling masonry where chunks fall away under repeated blows. Oh, he's using the crucible. That okay. weight, that, uh, that red energy sword. There's a sword in Doom? Yeah, it's an energy sword. Ah. Oh. So uh, it flashes again at another section of crumbling masonry where chunks fall away under repeated blows. You mark an army of skeletons blocks your path. Skeletons. <laughs> so they because they're giant as fuck. Hmm. A scepter in one hand and a saber in the other. Nice. Let's see what that does. An army of skeletons blocks your path. Each of them is about 12 feet tall, wielding a scepter in one hand and a saber in the other. They move slowly forward menacingly, their eyes glowing red hot against skulls made up completely of teeth. <laughs> their weapons gleam darkly even though they appear dull gray in color. A few more swing around corners or leap down staircases to join the attack force. You lift up your sword and wordlessly charge forward. Nice. You now lift up carnage? your sword and wordlessly charge forward. Carnage ensues. Bone crunches beneath every blow struck by both weapon and fist. Blood sprays everywhere. Screams echo off walls. Dust fills the air so thickly now that visibility becomes impossible within moments. You... 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 Mindlessly continue hacking and slashing your way... Through the skeletons. You continue mindlessly hacking and slashing your way through the skeletons until the room is completely empty. You see a door on the far side. Through gritted teeth you shout, I'm going back! I'll find my own damn! Before stumbling over nothingness. All sensation fades quickly after stepping foot outside the chamber, except for pain throbbing along your left arm, which had taken several hits during the fight. The fuck? Okay. So what does that even mean? What does what mean? That he's... I what, did he fall? Stumbling over nothing. He's just, he tripped. Uh, the, the, the door was obviously a trap.
Okay. Let's see what that let's see what that does. Okay. That should you get like a health pack or something? He's walking around with a with a, bro, a beat up arm. Beat up, but not broken, but not mutilated. I think it'll be fine. Let's do that. The door was obviously a trap. You'd have to find another way. But how? There wasn't anything else visible save rows upon rows of undead soldiers waiting patiently behind each corner. And there were too many passages leading deeper inside to make any kind of headway without becoming hopelessly lost. You, you activate your holographic map. Cross genre. Ugh. You activate your holographic map. Some floating skeleton with a scythe was kind enough to give it to you after you slew him. Now all you need to do is figure out what direction he went once you killed him. Or maybe just wander blindly, aimlessly, hoping for luck to strike twice and then kill whatever happens. Either would lead nowhere productive, if not outright dangerous, since vampires can easily blend into darkness well beyond sight unless illuminated directly by light. You decide fuck it and go straight up, literally. That how does he does he just like shoot the jumps. ceiling? He just jumps up. <laughs> okay. Through the fucking ceiling. You decide fuck it and decide to go straight up. You jump upward, smashing through ceiling after ceiling on your way skyward. As soon as possible, you reach floor level and turn right instead of continuing upward towards some unknown destination. Now don't stop us! We just said we were going up! This time seems better than wandering randomly because, although you don't know exactly why yet, somehow you feel safer knowing roughly where you're heading rather than trying to guess based only on random chance while avoiding... Danger, and then period. They ju it just contradicted us. We said we were jumping up and you said you, you decide you not to jump up. You want to retry it? Yeah. Try for something better? Yeah, let's do that. At least here, none of these stupid fucking monsters. <laughs> let's try to stop me, right? After climbing past yet another floor, you finally reach the top level, only to discover yourself staring at a single large window looking out onto nightmarish landscape below. Endless black forest stretching endlessly towards distant horizon lit sporadically by... What? What is it lit by? Uh... By bonfire. Uh, I was gonna say, before <laughs> tomorrow, sure. <clears throat> Hold on. Rather than doing that, because it'll start a new line, you just uh, do this: copy, uh, cut, paste. Uh, oh. oh, where's my where's Here. my keyboard? Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's a new another. Uh, there we go. And then you can write an input there. Okay. Let's Again. sporadically by portals to Mars. Wonderful, isn't it? Dracula says behind you. Oh, I like how anything that isn't human, he just, uh, the Slayer just autocorrects as demon. Yeah. Uh, w wonderful, isn't it? Dracula says, appearing behind you. You turn to face the demon. He stands almost nine feet tall, despite wearing fancy clothes instead of armor. His skin glows pale white underneath silken clothing patterned in gold trim. Even his hair appears golden rather than silver, thanks to some trickery involving lightning. Oh, is that on your phone? Ah, uh, yeah, it is. Alright. I'm sorry, I need to step away for a sec. Go for it. I'll keep him. I, I'll write the next part. Okay, here we go. Don't kill Zillarog, I'm gonna do something cool.
Whoops. Okay, good. All right. You there? Yeah, I'm there. Uh, thanks to some trickery involving involving lightning. All right then, buddy, Dracula says as he pulls out a giant greatsword. I'm going to shit yourself. What? Hold on, I gotta... It's a, actually a, a Doom Eternal review reference. I'm gonna show it to you, because it is hilarious. Uh... I feel like that was a very sudden shift in tone. He swings hard at you while simultaneously kicking open the window. Wind whistles violently between marble columns supporting roof above. Rain begins pelting down heavily from storm clouds already forming overhead. Lightning strikes somewhere near ground level, illuminating everything briefly bright blue. It seemed to ignore the change in tone and just continue on as it was anyway. Well, it is the proper tone. It's literally the correct... Now that's a line from the Castlevania anime. I'm going to shit yourself. Wow, what a subversion to think Dracula would say that! Well, you know what? At least it's fucking epic. Did you see the video? Uh, how how long is it? Six seconds. I, I assume it's just someone saying, "I'm going to shit yourself." It's it, it's the, it's Doctor Samuel Hayden saying that. It's somebody, I don't know why. I just find it to be fucking hilarious. Just a, all right, dang buddy, I'm going to shit your. So is that like a line from Doom Eternal? No, it's a line that the guy that the I don't know. You just. Like what's the what is the what is the line that sounds the most oddly threatening? Okay, I guess that's one way to interpret it. It's like what the fuck does that mean, and why? And I don't want that done to me. Okay, so uh, lightning strikes somewhere near ground level, illuminating illuminating everything briefly bright blue. You must understand, Doom Slayer. Everything I do is for the betterment of mankind. Is that, is that Dracula's game? Sure. I I have to say that the that although the the new one is supposed to be more more uh, like advanced, this one it has like the most is like the most stable. You notice that it's it's very stable. This the I guess it, it's missing a lot of like uh, it's missing some pronouns, not pronouns, but like V's and A's. Bridging oh. words here and there, I've noticed. Okay. I kind of want to say, like, a Mankind Ill Needs line, but that's not Doomslayer at all to say something like that. Yeah. Everything. That's a... Okay, that's that, a I know it's a, sweet, it's a Sweet Tooth line. That's a fucking Duke. That's a fucking Duke Nukem line. <laughs> okay. What that is? <laughs> Shut up and bleed, motherfucker. Duke Nukem says as he appears from behind, shooting him with a shotgun. No. Uh. You scowl and and flip off Dracula. <laughs> okay. Are they, I feel like we need to establish that a fight is starting. Otherwise, it's just going to keep doing suspense stuff. Well, he did. He swung his fucking sword. Wait, did he? Yeah, he swings hard at you while see, simultaneously kicking over, open the window. Okay. Do you, so do you think it will... Swing your sword at Dracula, then. How about that?
You must understand, Doomslayer, everything I do is for the betterment of mankind. You scowl and swing your sword back at him. As expected, however, the blade passes harmlessly through his body. In fact, neither rain nor wind seem affected either, although lightning continues striking nearby areas. But why did I waste time trying to lure you out here alone? Okay, so he needs a holy weapon of some kind. Yeah, Dracula... Dracula snaps his fingers, and then a platform, a, ca a platform with a cage on it raises from the ground. Inside, you recognize your beloved pet rabbit, Daisy. That's canon, actually. You I, have I, a yeah, pet I'm rabbit aware. Daisy. Darian wants him to pull out the BFG, but that would that wouldn't do anything to Dracula, would it? Maybe it would. It, we'll let the AI decide whether or not it would. Okay. Dracula snaps his fingers. Suddenly, a cage rises up from the ground. Inside is your beloved pet rabbit, Daisy. Your anger erupts. Veins pop in your forehead. You pull out your BFG. Without hesitation, you fire shot full power into the cage, holding poor little Daisy. She lets out a terrified shriek, followed closely by silence. This can't happen. No, we gotta retry that. Retry. <laughs> Smoke trails lazily upward where her fur used to be. Tiny bits of metal remain scattered across the ground. Well, Dracula's like, what the fuck? Pointing at the vampire, you say, Get the fuck out of- Before finishing your sentence, the gun explodes? <laughs> bits fly everywhere, including bits of skull. Dead eye sockets stir blankly upward. Who's? I um, don't know. One more time? Was it Doom Guys? Aim carefully, because hitting the vampire might accidentally destroy part of town. Okay, oh, that's new lore. Load-bearing. I have tied myself to the town beneath you. Fire rages across surface area of gun. Okay. Across Causing surface. sparks to fly wildly in midair. This seems to annoy Dracula greatly, who bellows angrily. What? <laughs> what? Not no... Not just a scream, just what? Dracula uh, begs pitifully. <laughs> he sees the BFG 9000, he's like, oh no. no I don't, he's not begging, he's like, he's trying to use a bargaining chip. Yeah. Okay. Dracula bargains. Oh, I, I guess there's no, like, line return. At length, you realize the, the futility of attacking the monster holding your precious bunny captive. Instead, you throw down your sword and walk calmly towards him. The creature sneers nastily. Punch him in his stupid fucking bro hug. Okay, that was... <laughs> Daisy squeaks happily in response. She's alive, all right. For now, anyway. Maybe she won't die permanently this time, huh? That means I get her back safe and sound, doesn't it? Yes, Doom Guy, it does. Tomoko says as, as she finishes up her story. No. <laughs> okay, sure. This is this is probably piss people off more than <laughs> yeah, it does. We can, we can go back after this. I just wanted to see what would happen with Bro Hug. A moment later, two women appear beside you. One holds hands together in prayer, while the other clasps hers tightly. Clasps or what? <laughs> clasps her hands to form an X shape. Both wear heavy cloaks that look like they're covered in feathers. 
For you, Dracula says. <laughs> okay, you gave me a bro hug. You got your buddy back. Now have these two women. <laughs> okay, let's go back to bro hug. Let's change that. Yeah, let's change that. Friendship. You punch him in his stupid fucking teeth. Oh, here we go. I want to see what it turns into. You punch him in his stupid fucking vampire teeth, knocking his head clean off. It lands on the ground with a satisfying splat. As you approach the cage to free Daisy, however, the fiend's body begins to transform behind you. Within seconds, you're faced with a gigantic hulking monstrosity covered in fur that resembles rotting meat. Close enough. Its mouth opens wide, revealing sharp fangs dripping with venomous saliva. Fangs that look hungry and eager to rend you limb from limb. Okay, uh -oh. so Doom Guy versus Final Phase Dracula. Sure. You punch him in his stupid fucking vampire teeth again. <laughs> Again, it works perfectly fine this time, only problem being that the massive beast reverts back to normal form instantly, leaving you standing next to an unconscious man bleeding profusely and barely able to stand upright due to grievously injured limbs. You punched him so hard his fucking hands and feet felt it. <laughs> so he, he punched him back to first form. <laughs> that was, that's funny as fuck. That's like, that was like a one-punch man fight. You shrug and walk <clears throat> off, pet rabbit in tow. He was like, not my problem anymore. I've, I've, I've won. Well, no, Doom Guy makes a point. He has to kill demons, right? You raise your foot to stomp the head of Dracula. You... Yeah, I know. You, you can't leave before this is finished. Thank you for that. I, do, I, I try to give it more than just like a 10-word a sentence. No matter how much fun punching the fucker has given you, just kick to the bastard and flip me like always a moron. <laughs> Except AI suddenly, the sound of thunder echoes through the cavern. The cloud overhead splits apart and reveals a woman carrying two swords strapped together horizontally on her shoulder. What? what a Valkyrie? What? Okay. You a demon. <laughs> you look up at the woman, confused. Could this be another demon? Or perhaps someone sent specifically to help you defeat the evil vampire lord? Maybe she knows something about the mysterious summons you've received that led you here in the first place. She smiles kindly at you, and nods slightly. What? <laughs> Just do it in front of her. <laughs> you step on Dracula's stupid fucking vampire skull. Then again, and again. Before long, the entire thing cracks and breaks apart. Bits of bone fall away, landing in various piles throughout the room, including one pile that includes the remains of the previously defeated skeletons. Okay. And she, she looks at you and is like, but... She's like, look sick. Uh... Yeah? Was that really necessary? <laughs> she says. <laughs> the woman looks at you, surprised. Was that really necessary? She asks. Her voice sounds somewhat familiar, but you don't know where you recognize it from. Still, you smile and nod. 
because apparently beating the hell out of Dracula doesn't count if the result is getting kicked in the face repeatedly. What? He's like thinking, well, I'm, I'm gonna just be agreeable with her, because I really... It doesn't matter if I beat Dracula if she's gonna kill me. Okay. I don't know, maybe. That's my interpretation, anyway. It, well, Doom Guy's a good Christian boy. Maybe he thinks she's an angel. What? Let's let the AI decide her identity. Just the woman. Do we just said, keep going, or the woman introduces herself. My name is, and then let's let the AI decide who she is. He goes slim shady. <laughs> my, my name, name is, is Celine, the Moon Goddess. Okay, welcome to my home, the underground labyrinth. For the moment, please follow me. We have a lot of work ahead of us, hero. Let's get started. No. no! No, and that's where the story is. <laughs> no. The it. end. That means no more fighting. That also means no more running away. You want to remain alive, yes. But that won't happen unless you accept the inevitable and die. So you lift the heavy hammer and slam it down against the stone beneath your feet. No! The end means the end story. Jeez. Okay, I got it. Here's how we did it. To buy a let's then. get it. Let's get a Tomoko end note. Oh no, I I wanted to. I'll keep po thanks for reading. Remember to subscribe to my account for more awesome crossovers, lol. I'll keep posting stuff every day, so bookmark and share with friends, okay? John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith, author of the upcoming comic series Doomed, coming soon to Kickstarter and Amazon, etc. John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Well, <sighs> is this is this an alias? She had to resort to one after last time. <laughs> yeah, after she got banned for racism. <laughs> Nobody will know. Okay, that works, I guess. There's our ending. Yeah, there's our ending. Uh, one more? Yeah, we got time for one more. Dragon. Let's rock the dragon, then. Okay. Uh, can, so, can this do things other than stories, you think? Uh, what do you think? I was thinking you... of, uh, like, you remember AI Dungeon would sometimes put out, like, scripts or, like, reviews like, the, the dialogue from YouTube videos it would sound like. Oh, yeah, you want to do, like, a review of a fake Dragon Ball Z movie? I was I was going to say, let's, let's see what it has to say about Dragon Ball GT. Okay, let's do it, then. Let's make sure we add into, memor into like, the options. This is the review of the, of the, of Dragon Ball GT. This is a review of Dragon Ball GT. This series is, and then we'll just leave it at that. Okay, no module. AI yeah, model Sigurd. Yeah, that sounds that sounds all right. No module probably means that it will it will be basic. Now, should we set that, like expectations for like what what people think about GT? Uh, well, let's see what the AI has to say. Uh, Dragon Ball GT is is not well regarded. Is a sequel to popular anime Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball GT is not popular. Okay, author's note. This is a review of Dragon Ball GT. Right. Uh, okay, so no module. No S module. Sigurd, Sigurd is what we're using? Yeah. Continue to do Sigurd, sure. Uh, bias. Oh, how often something, how often something will appear? Like a certain word. 
uh, banned tokens well, is just uh, words or phrases that... Let's that... have it talk about Goku a lot. Goku? Okay. Goku. With like a, a bias of zero will have no effect. So we need like slightly more than zero, oh, don't we? Uh, yeah, you're right. Goku, type in Goku again, sorry. Uh, and then bias 0.3. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll be slightly more likely to talk about Goku. Yeah, and we'll... And we'll have it be enabled. And, but uh, it won't unbias when generated, which means that the, that the story will be talking about Goku a whole lot. Well, a slight bias. We didn't set Goku. it too high. Bias it's for GT, Goku. Goku time. Goku time. That's right. not actually what it stands for. Uh, 300 characters. Uh, yeah, all right. Wait, story writer. Uh. I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. We, we, it seemed like, that seemed like the best setting was coherent creativity. Or whatever, what did we use last time? I think we did coherent creativity. That yeah. was the best story for sure. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. This now we review. we got to type in a little more. We got to make it sound like review speak, so it has something to work off of. Dragon Ball GT is the sequel to Dragon Ball Z. GT is the. Is it? I guess mm -hmm. long awaited. Long awaited. It wasn't really long awaited. That was kind yeah. of the problem, but that's it, all right. Dragon Ball GT is the unnecessary sequel to Dragon Ball Z. Unexpected sequel. Unexpected sequel to Dragon Ball Z. It is the most disappointing thing. Uh, no, I've we don't ever... want to set expectations. I want to okay. see what it has to say about it. <laughs> Dragon Ball GT was the most disappointing thing since my son. 20 years after. Of. I think. All right, let's let's leave it at that. What does the AI think? Dragon Ball GT is the unexpected sequel to Dragon Ball Z, taking place 20 years after the end of the previous series. While it hasn't been the most re well received anime series by fans, I think that its merits are far greater than any criticisms levied against it. The show has some interesting ideas and twists on old concepts, while still feeling fresh in many ways. In this article, I'll be discussing my thoughts about various aspects of the story as told through Dragon Ball GT's first two seasons. If you want spoilers for earlier episodes or just don't care, then feel free to skip ahead. Okay. That, that sounds apt. That sounds right. like review dialogue. Dragon Ball GT begins by... It didn't mention Goku at all. No, I, that's because the bias was... I, I imagine the bias was set pretty low, or yeah. we didn't update it. Hold on. I want to double-check the bias Okay. for a sec. Make sure it's... Uh, top case sampling. Oh, it's empty. That explains it. There we go. There, I fixed it. <laughs> okay. In the very first episode of the series, Goku is turned back into a child by the surprise return of the villain, Emperor Pilaf. He begins his journey with Goku to find himself again, but their quest will take them all over the world, meeting new people along the way who have similar goals. This leads up to our main conflict. Goku must travel across dimensions and worlds, searching for Bulma, whom he left behind when she was kidnapped during the events of Dragon Ball Z. Along her, there are also other important characters from the original series, such as Yamcha, Tien Shinhan, Kr- I actually- okay. <laughs> so this is alternate universe. This is a Dragon Ball GT that we could have gotten. So Vegeta kidnapped Bulma, and him and Emperor Pilaf along with- Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
Oh. Here, let's, okay. uh... I'll leave that, and then I'll enter some more as, as down here. Okay. Well, if you enter it down there, then it'll be a new line. That's oh, how that's, that's, that's how that true. Okay. All right. Send it. Uh, do, uh, send it now, or do we need to type another prompt in? Uh, we don't need to type another prompt in, I, I okay. don't think. Whom we left behind when she was kidnapped during the events of Dragon Ball Z. Alongside her, there are also other important characters from the original series, such as Yamcha, Tian Shinhan, Krillin, the world's strongest human, and Master Roshi, who has returned to the front lines for this new series. The plot can get pretty convoluted at times, especially if you haven't watched Dragon Ball Z before. However, even though there were several points where I had no idea what would happen next, overall I found myself really enjoying the storyline. It does help that the writing is quite good. Despite having so much going on, every character feels like they're worth caring, caring about. Oh wow, that's a change from the original. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay, we don't have to do that. No, even Yamcha. That, or that's right, even Yamcha. That's right, even Yamcha. In fact, I found his character arc to be one of my favorite parts of the entire season. After being captured by Pilaf and put under mind control, Yamcha eventually finds himself fighting alongside Goku and others in order to save everyone else from certain death. When faced with the possibility of sacrificing himself, Yamcha instead chooses to fight, ultimately giving us a powerful scene between father and son. Huh? Fuck, uh, Yamcha has a son? <laughs> As someone who grew up watching Dragon Ball Z, seeing these scenes played out reminded me of why I like both shows so much in the first place. Um, but, so, is it Yamcha's father? He has to fight his father? Powerful moment. Let, let, let's delete this and go back to Yamcha's son, because I'm curious about that. <laughs> That's right, Yamcha's son. Let's just, let me just see where it goes if we hit send again? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, He's darn, it, it just moved on. One of my biggest gripes with DBZ is how little screen time Kale BN gets. As Kale Goku, B. Vegeta, and company head off towards Earth, we see plenty of scenes featuring Goku and his friends, but almost nothing of Kale BN's role in these later adventures. You'd think that he was supposed to be the third kid in the group. He'd play more of a prominent part in the last few episodes of the series. That's right, I should probably talk about... I should probably mention who Kale Bian is. It's Yamcha's son, obviously. Oh. I mean, we can establish that, right? Yeah, yeah, Kale Bian is Yamcha's son. With who? I don't know. Well, Kale is like a vegetable, so... It, would, did he have to find a Saiyan wife? Yeah, have... <laughs> Vegeta got, got Bulma, he's like, fuck it, I'll find a Saiyan wife. It actually happens in a fanfic I read. Oh, I'm sure. He's like... Hold on, we can uh, we can use the details for this. Yeah. Kale Bian is Yamcha's son. Kale Bian is a half Saiyan. Okay, let's continue. But alas... I'll wait for it to finish, because it, it takes a little time. You'd think since he was supposed to be the third kid in the group, he'd play more of a prominent part in the last few episodes of the series. But alas, we never got to see anything past the initial kidnapping sequence until the second half of the final battle. Personally, I've always felt like Kale Bean should have been, should have gotten more screen time in the series, but maybe that could have been addressed better in future installments. Either way, I'm I'm glad to see him getting enough attention here. Although Kale Bean isn't present throughout present throughout the majority of the series run, 
He does make appearances. Doing something. Fighting. Fighting people. I don't know. I wish it didn't always do a new line. Yeah. Although Kale Bian isn't present throughout the majority of the series' run, he does make appearances training with his father Yamcha, which are usually surprisingly sweet little sequences. They manage to capture the essence of fatherhood without coming off too preachy, something that makes me appreciate them immensely. Another major change from the classic series is the introduction of Videl, a female warrior android created by Dr. Jiro and piloted by Goku's friend Tron Bonaparte. Tron. Tron Bon? Tron. Tron Bon. She spends most of the first couple of episodes locked away inside of herself until Goku manages to break open her shell and reveal her true self. Oh, it's one of those. It's like a One Piece thing. Okay. Maybe it's Tron Bon like pilots a, a big mech, right? Maybe that's what Goku broke open? Yeah. Th this is a oh. weird GT. <laughs> The the main villain of this series is very is very evil too. Is yeah. it a, is the villain a he or a she? Oh, uh, we'll let the we'll let the uh, AI decide. The main villain of this series is particularly unique, and as evil as they come. The name of this villain is actually Pilaf, a man who used to be a hero named Turles. Okay, sure. Unfortunately, Turles' e ego led him down a dark path, culminating in him becoming known as the ultimate enemy of humanity. Now 20 years later, Pilaf has become ruler of the universe by killing off anyone who might oppose his rule, including his own children. His goal is to use the power of the Dragon Balls to gain eternal life and thus dominate the galaxy forevermore. Wow, mm. Pilaf has made some gains. Uh. I don't know where the Turles thing came from, though. He used to be... You want to rename it? A hero named... Uh, Rice. Philip? Rice. Okay, That's sure. a Dragon Ball name. Yeah. Rice, Rice. Is Rice Pilaf. Where do you want to go from here? Uh. The fact that he begins the series by allying with Goku and company makes the return to villainy particularly impactful. It started out saying that they were, like, traveling together. Though, honestly, it doesn't seem like Pilaf has changed much at all. Maybe he did learn to grow out of his selfish tendencies, but considering how many villains start out as heroes, I doubt that's the case. This is a reverse Dragon Ball. Everyone starts as a hero. Instead, this probably means he just wants revenge for whatever happened to him during the course of his previous adventure which only furthers the mystery surrounding the identity of the real culprit behind the attacks on Earth. Which brings me to one of my complaints about GT. They haven't revealed the villain yet. Oh, so this is ongoing in this? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this Ultra Universe Super doesn't exist. It's just GT all the way down. Which brings me to one of my complaints about GT. They still haven't revealed the real villain of this series. There are numerous theories floating around online and within the fanbase itself regarding who the Mastermind may be, but none of them have ever been confirmed, at least not officially. Some fans believe that Goku's nemesis Krillin is responsible for everything that happens in the series, but I personally think that's unlikely. One thing that stands out about the series is the lack of any actual superpowers beyond Goku's. Okay. Okay. No no Goku. one has powers except Goku? What? 
I don't. I oh, can you retry it? I don't okay. think I, that doesn't make any sense. No, I, I like most of it. Not officially. Like yeah. Let, let's delete the the part where it brings up Krillin. Yeah, at least not officially said. At least not officially. And if there aren't any official answers, then why bother making the storyline at all? What purpose do the mysteries serve? Is the whole point of the story to create drama and suspense among viewers? Or is there another reason? Honestly, I think the latter option is the best explanation. Well, that was a complete non-answer. Yeah, much like the show itself with its main identity of its main villain. While the show certainly tries to keep things exciting, it becomes clear early on in the narrative that Pilaf isn't really all that strong. Yeah, that checks he out. He is very clever, though, and near and defeats and is able to keep Matt match with Goku by wits alone. What are you doing? Uh, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm just moving things around. He is. How, it... What? Go on. He is, however, very clever and manages to keep up with Goku on wits alone. He uses his powers to cause confusion and he just ignored us again. <laughs> Often manipulating enemies into attacking each other. Pilaf also possesses knowledge of the past lives of those who have died in his presence. Wow, that's a that's a new superpower. <laughs> that's a that's a stand power. He's the fear. <laughs> that wow, every time he kills someone, he gains their memories. Not only that, their memories, but the, those of their past lives. He seems to know exactly what Goku's greatest weakness is. He knows that Goku will be able to defeat him if given the chance, but Pilaf is smart enough to realize that Goku won't give up easily either. And, and let's finish up. Anyway, I just want to say that this series is actually pretty good and you should give it a try. I, I, yeah, I was, I was going to say, should we find out how Pilaf, like, ends, but, uh... The the series this continuity of the series is still ongoing. Yeah. Getting meta with it. Their conflict comes to a head when the two finally meet face to face. The match takes place atop Mount Odessia. A volcano that Pilaf controls using his power over space and time. Nice. Goku and Pilaf both strike blows, but neither can land the decisive blow, leaving the fight to hang in the balance. However, the outcome is decided when Pilaf attempts to kill Goku by throwing him off the mountain. Goku ends up falling hundreds of feet, but somehow survives unscathed. That, that tracks. Like, remember when in GT, they, Goku died, but he just no-sold it? Probably because he can fly. Yeah. Turns out that Pilaf was trying to throw Goku off the clip cliff to prevent him from finding his full potential. Goku defeats Pilaf in the end and learns that Pilaf is afraid of Goku discovering his secret. To protect his plan to conquer the world, Pilaf decides to go back in time and erase his existence. Goku stops him, but not before Pilaf erases his memories of their encounter. Oh, wow. So nothing was resolved. That also sounds almost plausible for a sequence of Dragon Ball events. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, it does. It's just like, what the fuck? In the end, even though this series hasn't yet concluded, I'm going to give it a score of 8 out of 10. My main complaint about the show is that Pilaf still remains mysterious. While the writers have tried to explain his motivations several times, they're never fully satisfied with their explanations. One of the reasons that Pilaf is such an interesting villain is that his actions don't always make sense. He goes back in time to alter his own history and kill his sons, but leaves his daughter alive. Okay. Oh, shit. How will she fit into all this? I don't know. Alright, last one. 
How will she fit into the story to come? I guess we'll have to keep watching to find out. Yeah, it broke. Yeah, well, it's done. It recognizes it's done. Or you want to retry it? See if that. Let's try retry once. Yeah. You gotta wait for it to finish. I wonder why it does this. I don't know. Glitch in the Matrix. Dragon Ball Z Super is an anime based on the popular Dragon Ball franchise. It is the third live-action adaptation of Dragon Ball Z. Oh, I don't like this universe anymore. I'm glad this isn't our continuity. Fights his way through double batter, number of battles in order to uh, The fourth play. Dragon Ball movie. The story follows Goku and his friends as Goku fights his way through a number of battles in order to reach the legendary Dragon Balls. I've been a huge Dragon Ball fan since childhood, and Dragon Ball Z is my favorite. Let's let's just end this now. This yeah. is cursed. He's starting yeah. all over again. Yep. Now he's talking about Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Z Super. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I got I got to get it right. All right, I think we're done for the day. Yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the uh, novel AI. So uh, it was kind of hit and miss. Once we yeah, went on the more, almost... once we went on the more like stable settings, it kind of went yeah. better. Yeah, I'll have to play around with the settings a bit more. You but, really uh, can't have the randomness too high or the repetition too forgiving. Yeah, otherwise... This is the most stuff. we've had it repeat itself. Yeah, still a new thing, but they're they're working on it. It's getting better as it goes on, so... It'll be interesting to see it to evolve further in the future. Yeah. That's it for now, though. Thanks for watching. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. See you next time.